In this lesson, we're going to discuss the importance of scale and then also set up the initial layout for our scene. Now, whenever working with environments, it's extremely important to have scale set up. Now, whenever working in a team environment, um, scale is going to be very, very important because whenever you're building environments, you are not going to be working on the same one as someone else. And so whenever you have a uh, set of characters that have been built specifically um, and they're brought into these environments, um, we want to make sure that they, they look right in all of these different environments. So um, if your scale isn't right and that character's brought in, your environment could be way too small. Um, they may look like giants or they may look like ants in your environment compared to someone else. So having a consistent um, guideline for scale is going to be very important. So how do we get consistency in our scale? Well, when working in 3D, we can set up real world units and we can work that way and that's very common. Another way to do it is to um, use an object as uh, kind of a way to check your scale. So I've seen some common practices of bringing in a character uh, from an animation or a game or something like that and saying okay this is our character and this is what's going to be used and you know this is how we need you to build the environment. So you need to make sure that you have that uh, that scale guideline set in place. Now when working on things like still shots and things like that, scale may not be as important. However, scale does have a factor whenever working with realistic lighting and things like that. So that's also something that you want to keep in mind. So normally it's a good idea to try to stick around real world scale. Okay, so a way to set that up, let's go to Customize, Unit Setup, and I'm going to go ahead and use meters for this project. Meters are a little over three feet. Okay, so if you understand feet, uh, that's going to be very simple for you. Um, and I'm also using meters for those that uh, don't necessarily understand the US standard of feet. Okay, so uh, just a little bit of a compromise here. So if I go ahead and hit OK on this, I can come in and I can start to uh, build my objects, but my grid isn't set up to do that. It isn't set up to work with meters just yet because I don't necessarily know how large a meter is inside of my scene until I actually build an object. So if I build this, I can type in one meter by one meter and you know I can see that. But I want my grid to help me with that. So what I can do is set that grid up. So let's right click on our snap settings and this will bring up our grid and snap settings. So if we go to home grid uh, panel here, we can set up the grid spacing to one meter. We'll hit OK and now every grid space is a single meter and this is going to be helpful. So let's go ahead and create our corridor, our initial layout. So let's go ahead and drag out a rectangle and I'm going to drag this up Okay, and I'm not really being careful with uh, the length or anything just yet because I'm going to type in some values here for that. So on my width I'm going to go ahead and set that up to 14 meters and then on my height I'm going to go ahead and take that up to about 3 meters and then my length is going to be 4 meters. Okay, So that's going to give me a good uh, ratio here to work with my corridor and I'm going to go ahead and convert this to editable poly and let's delete out the polygons on the end. Okay, So you can see here this gives us a plenty of room to work in a corridor. We can put plenty of objects in here and create a really nice looking scene. Okay, Alright, so now that I have this, let's go ahead and shape it up a little bit more because I want to create kind of a corner. So I'm looking down this corridor, I can see a wall and I can definitely see that uh, there's a corner uh, or a path that's leading around the corner here. So let's go ahead and shape that up by going to edge mode. Let's select this edge right here and I'm going to grab my move tool and let's go to our top view hitting T on the keyboard and I'm just going to push that back. Okay, So let's push this back to uh, right about this grid line right here and what we can do is go to border mode and I'm going to select that border, hold shift and drag that up. Let's go ahead and hit F4 to turn on our edge faces. All right. 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to vertex mode by hitting 1 on the keyboard, selecting those vertices right there, and dragging that down in the Y just to straighten up that shape. I don't necessarily need all of that extra hallway there. Because again, we are just creating just a still um, scene here, still shot. Okay, so that looks good. Now I don't want these sharp corners. I want those to be kind of rounded off a little bit, so I'm going to go to edge mode and select the inside corner and the outside corner and let's use chamfer. Now chamfer is going to allow us to split one edge or the selected edges into two or more if you set it up that way. So if I spread this out using my chamfer amount I could tell it just how far to actually chamfer. So if I want this chamfer to be around three feet or one meter I could do so and type that in. So that looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and go to about 1.5 and I think that'll be good. Now I can add more segments in here if I want to round off these corners. I could do so. So um, I don't necessarily want to do that. I want to go ahead and keep them kind of these this angled shape here. So I'm going to leave that at 1 and hit OK. Now using chamfer sometimes it will give you uh, some odd polygons once you chamfer this. So you'll see here that we have a triangle or a couple of triangles there and then we have these ingons that were created. Now with environment modeling uh, like this we don't necessarily have to worry too much about triangles and ingons because they're not animating. Okay, Normally um, triangles and ingons are going to be more of a problem around areas of deformation like on a character or something like that and that's really not going to be a big issue here. However, ingons and triangles could pose a problem if you're using smoothing techniques. Now uh, with using like turbo smooth and trying to um, uh, harden up edges and things like that trying to use those smoothing techniques we do want to kind of stick around quads. Now I find quads to be very clean and that's kind of a reflection on um, you as a modeler how clean you are in the process. So what I like to do is just go ahead and clean these up while I'm here. So I'm just going to select all of those edges and hit control backspace to remove those. And then I'm going to select these along the bottom, do the same thing. So control backspace. And then I'm going to go to vertex mode, right click and cut. Now I noticed that polygon right there, don't worry about that. So let's cut from here to here. And then we're going to cut from here to here and then right click to end that cutting process each time. Now another way that we can create a segment from this vertex to this one is just by simply selecting the two and then using connect. I'm going to do the same thing here. Okay, That will give you the same result. So we've created this initial layout of our scene and this is going to help us with our scale. We're going to be building objects and, and building props and things like that and setting them inside of our uh, corridor here and we're really going to be able to tell uh, just how big these objects are that we're building here. So we're going to reflect back to this quite often. Now before I end I always like to set up a material on my objects. Um, I don't necessarily care for all these different colors so I like to set up black and then apply a gray material to my objects. I like to make that a little bit darker than that default gray. And then I'll hit OK. There we go. So there we have our initial layout of our scene. And in our next lesson we're going to start getting into creating our first prop. So I'll see you then.